everyone and welcome to another review from Class 47 Peter and today we're going to be having a look at a halogen model and today I'm going to be having a look at a model that I've been wanting to get for a while now this is a Class 17 Clayton which is a model, as I've said, it's something I've been after for a while now but I didn't get one before because I was buying other things but then when I was looking on eBay while I was browsing for bargains I came upon this a class 17 Clayton on eBay is a buy it now for £92 mint condition only been used as a test run and that was buy it now for £92 and so I couldn't resist and so I bought it because I had been wanting a Clayton for quite a while and I thought well this is the perfect chance to get one and so I grabbed it now I have seen the preserved class 17 at the Seven Valley a couple of times which you can find on my YouTube channel and some of my videos it's a very unique locomotive not just because it's the only one of its kind left but because it has only one cab and that's in the middle of the locomotive rather than on the ends similar to the class 14 and the class 07s because they have only just the one cab and that's in the middle of the locomotive and this livery with the four yellow warning panels is the livery that the preserved Clayton is currently in now it was before in the BR green livery with the small yellow warning panel which that is the version of that livery I've seen it in it has since then been given the full yellow end which I haven't seen but I have seen the pictures of that on the internet but anyway let's get this model open and see what it's like so this is the old style halogen packaging which uses the foam packaging we will stop using this packaging now and then they use the plastic packaging of course it's a very nice firm box it's a very nice box as well I do like the colour of this so here we have the instructions for the model on the front just tells you thank you for purchasing the model on the back some brief history of the real Clytons inside here it tells you pretty much how to remove the body basically so I'll put that to one side so now I'll take off the foam cover and there's the model just look at that so we have some accessory bags in here well a accessory bag rather because we do have some accessories here which we will take a look at now so first of all we get this little accessory bag which in it we have we have two slim tension lock couplings and we also have some snow players, which is interesting because I didn't think the Clytons had snow players. the preserved one doesn't have any and in the pictures I've seen on the internet and video footage of these in service I haven't seen any with the snow players. but you can add them if you want to but I won't be doing it so I'll put them into my spares box then we have a couple of sheets of these train reporting numbers which are made of paper I will come back onto these in a second once I've unboxed the model So all that's left to do now is to remove the model from the packaging. And so I'll put the packaging to one side and we can now have a look at the model itself 
Now before I talk about the detail and the weight of the model, one thing I do want to talk about, as I said earlier, was the train reporting numbers, which I'm going to talk to you about now. Now as I said, they're made of paper, and you get two of them, the same train reporting numbers. What you have to do is simply cut them out, whichever ones you want to use, and then you put them in the head code boxes. Now it doesn't mention in the instructions how to fit them, but something I recall seeing on the internet before is that to fit them in you have to take out the little head code box there by removing it, because it is removable, and then just simply fitting whichever try and report in number of your choice into the head code box and then slotting it back in. Now it doesn't look like it's going to be easy so what I might do is I might just simply cut one of these out and just glue them on the front of the head code boxes on both ends. The, there is working lights in this model I do believe the head code box lights up so I think just by gluing them on the front it shouldn't really affect the lights that much I'd have thought See, the lights should still shine through the head code train reporting numbers but we'll see because that will be a bit easier I think but anyway so now we'll move on to the weight of the model now this isn't the heaviest model I've ever held it has to be said, but then again it's not too heavy and it's not too light. It has got just about the right amount of weight in it, so there's enough weight in it to be able to pull trains around your layout. So this model isn't going to have any traction troubles. Without the weight, it wouldn't be able to pull trains, so there is weight in this model, so it will be able to pull them with ease still. Disregard how heavy the model is. Moving on to the detail now, which we have sprung buffers, as you can see. I don't have much care for them, as I said before, but they're there, regardless. They are made of plastic, though. It would have been nice if they were made of metal, but that's not too much of a biggie. You could always paint them up and put some grease on them as well, if you wanted to. Now, all the buffer beam detail has already been fitted on this model, as you can see. We've got a screw link coupling and some brake pipes and vacuum pipes on there. However, once you put the coupling in, you might find that the coupling catches on the detail, so you might have to trim one or two of those brake pipes down. Because otherwise, the coupling might catch on the detail and then it might derail the model, as well as the train. But it's nice to see that they have fitted all the detail parts for you that you usually have to fit. We have some separately fitted lamp irons on the front. We've got a very nice grill there on top of the head car box and some nice rivet detail on there too. We've got separately fitted metal handrails on the front of the loco as you can see. We've got two nice crispy printed stars on the front of the loco on both ends. Which, these I believe are to do with weight balance. Well, they are on the steam locos anyway, so I would have thought they'd apply to the same as the diesel locos, but could be wrong. But they're there and they look nice. We've got some footsteps on both ends of the loco, just under the running plate there. And they do look quite nice. We've got some nice detail on the bogies, painted axle boxes, the springs, as well as rivets, which look nice, as well as the fuel tank there, which does have some nice detail on it. On the side of the loco, we have a crispy printed warning sign, and a very nice little grill there, and a little handle there, which is, that basically opens up to the engine, so that's basically a latch basically, I suppose you could call it or a door, whichever you choose to call them really doesn't matter we've got a very nice grill there and painted as well we've got some more of these latches with handles on them they would open up 
to the engine in real life, but they're down to the model. But then again, I don't personally expect them to. But they're there anyway, and they look nice. We've got some more grills there, and another crispy printed warning sign there at the front, which looks very nice. We've got some very nice detail on top of the loco and painted as well, which looks nice. We've got a mesh grill on top of the bonnet with a fan underneath which doesn't spin but I don't really expect them to spin to be honest but it's there anyway and there is some nice rivet detail on that mesh grill there as well as you can see on the front of the loco where the exhausts are you've got some nice rivet detail and another crispy printed warning sign we have glazing in the cab windows and even at the sides of the windows you can see some rivet detail and we also have some window wipers as well now the window wipers are not separately fitted they are moulded but you do have to look quite closely at them to tell that they are moulded on so they are quite cleverly moulded there is some detail inside the cab alas none of it's painted but there is some detail there and it still looks nice on the window frames we've got more rivet detail and again glazing in the windows too we have a nice door handle there and some separately fitted handrails there on the door we have a crisply printed BR light crest which looks nice and the locomotive's ruin number 8592 crisply printed and very well applied I must say the roof isn't particularly interesting to look at but there is some nice detail on there with these exhaust ports which you could weather if you wanted to the detail on the other end on this bonnet is exactly the same, we've got the latches to open up to the engine, the door handles, the grills a couple of warning signs and another mesh grill on top with a fan underneath very nice detail Again on the other end of the loco, separately fitted metal handrails, sprung buffers, and all the buffer beam detail already fitted. Now the livery application is spot on. They've got the right shades of green, there are two shades of green, there's a lighter shade on top there by the windows and the darker shade on the body picked out the correct shades of the greens and very nice and evenly applied with no errors in the paint or rough edges etc and it really is a stunning livery and on the other side of the locker we have exactly the same detail okay so I've added the train reporting numbers on the model as you can see there's one of them and there's the other so all I did was, now you have to remove the headco box to put them in however trying to do so it wasn't really that easy it was a bit of a pain so I just basically glued them on the front of the head code boxes so I've used two of them from the one sheet the other can just be a spare well, they look pretty good I think hopefully We'll still be able to see the lights in the head cab boxes now. So, we can now move on to the running performance. Now we come on to the running performance. And as you can see straight out of the box, she is a smooth runner. However, she did have to have some lubrication. 
because before she was running really, really slow. So she's currently now undergoing running in. But even if she's only now running in, and she's now running better, there's no motors burning out, no jerky movements or anything of the sort. She's running as smooth as she should, straight out the box. Even if she had to have some lubrication. And also we have indeed still got the working lights in the head code box as you can clearly see. So we haven't lost the lights at all. Moving on to the loaded test run now. And so I've dug out the rack of chocolates and cream couches. There's six of them here, and as you can see here, it's amazing with these. According to the instructions though, she can manage over 15. Something I don't disbelieve, but I'm not going to try it. Even with just six coaches, this still shows you why the weight is so important in these models. So overall, considering that these are probably the locomotive's first proper runs, considering she's probably never ran before, at least properly, she's managed really well, as you can see. And she will make a great addition to the layout. 
I mean, I know the motor in this model is noisy, but then again, the real locomotives are noisy anyway, so that's not really a problem. So overall, I'm going to rate the Helgen Class 17 a 9 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Peter, reviewing Helgen's Clayton in the BR Green livery with the four yellow warning panels. And I shall see you again soon for the next review. But until then, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my other content and I'll see you again soon. But for now, goodbye and hope you've enjoyed this video and take care.